Great. Uh, I'm Liz Perry, the director of the Harvard Yanjing Institute, and it's my pleasure today to welcome all of you to this public roundtable on Asian archaeology, recent discoveries, and controversies. The Harvard Yanjing Institute, as most of you may not know, when we discovered at lunch today, uh, very few of the panelists knew. The Harvard Yanjing Institute is an independent foundation that is actually legally and financially independent of Harvard University. It was founded back in 1928 with a mission to advance higher education in Asia and also to increase academic communication between Asia and the West in the area particularly of Asian studies. Um, several years ago, the Harvard Yanjing Institute began to collaborate with the Association for Asian Studies, our primary professional association in the West, in the United States at least, for studying Asia. Um, partnered with the AAS to bring every year to the annual meeting at AAS a distinguished scholar from Asia as a keynote speaker. And uh, this year, the uh, AAS annual meeting will be held shortly in Seattle. And uh, we have the great pleasure this year of sponsoring at that meeting uh, Professor Lahiri from India and uh, organizing uh, around her participation in the AAS, this roundtable here at uh, Harvard. We decided uh, several years ago when we began this partnership with the AAS that uh, it would be a great idea to also invite the keynote speaker uh, to come here to Harvard and to take advantage of that opportunity to invite a number of distinguished scholars uh, from other parts of Asia to join the keynote speaker in a discussion about contemporary issues sometimes, sometimes very ancient issues as today, or today I think will be probably a mixture of very ancient and very contemporary issues um, that involve uh, countries across Asia. So in the past, our roundtables have looked at topics such as civil society in Asia, cross-national lessons, what various countries in Asia are actively learning from one another to today was another topic. Another focused on governance, uh, particularly in India and China. Another focused on Asian varieties of socialism. Another on uh, explaining the rise of China and its implications for the rest of Asia. Um, this year, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, designed the roundtable around uh, Professor Lahiri from Ashoka University in India. And because much of her work is focused on archaeology, this uh, roundtable will be largely on that topic. And it will be moderated uh, by my colleague Rowan Flad, uh, to whom I'm going to turn over the mic in just a second uh, here. Let me give a very brief introduction to Rowan before I do turn over the mic. And um, let me also, at this juncture, make a couple of other acknowledgments. Uh, first to the Harvard Asia Center for co-sponsoring this event. Uh, and then to staff members, Lindsay Strogatz and also James Flaherty there for their very hard work in bringing this uh, off to today. Um, to all of you, of course, for coming and particularly to the panelists uh, who have come from uh, different parts of Asia, Hawaii, and, and so forth. Uh, so we have quite a gathering today. And uh, as I said, it will be Professor Flad uh, who will moderate today's roundtable. Rowan Flad is the John Hudson Professor of Archaeology here in the Department of Anthropology at Harvard. He's taught uh, at Harvard for the past uh, dozen years, uh, I think it is, approximately. And uh, he's published extensively in both English and Chinese on various topics concerning ancient China. Uh, one of his books is entitled Salt Production and Social Hierarchy in Ancient China. Another co-authored is entitled Ancient Central China, an Archaeological Study of Centers and Peripheries Along the Yangtze River. So uh, it's with great pleasure that I turn the mic over to Rowan, who will take charge of the rest of the proceedings. Thanks very much.
Thank you, Liz, and uh, thank you all for coming. It's really a great pleasure to have you here today to uh, join me in what I'm sure will be an interesting and exciting event. Um, I really wanted to uh, express my sincere um, thanks to the Harvard Engineering Institute um, and Liz and to Lindsay and James as well for all the organization that's gone into making today uh, possible. Uh, when I was approached um, uh, by Liz earlier this year about the possibility of doing this roundtable, I was very excited because um, when Professor Lahiri was here a number of years ago, we had some really stimulating and interesting conversations, um, and I was excited about the prospect of her coming back and also the ability to have a number of other scholars working on interesting issues uh, whom, who may not have met each other to be able to come together and have an interesting, have a conversation about recent discoveries and controversies in the realm of Asian archaeology. Um, when uh, we formalized uh, the program, um, it came to me to uh, present our, our participants with a number of uh, questions to stimulate the, the conversation today. Um, and I want to read these for you briefly so that you have an, a sense of where what the direction that was given to them was and, and where this conversation is at least starting, but where it may not end up. Um, we were particularly interested in having them uh, focus on uh, controversies and discoveries in archaeology that may reflect tensions in, in contemporary society. And so when Liz men mentioned that there would be a uh, connection of both the ancient and the recent in today's uh, conversation, I'm sure that's true, uh, with an emphasis on political, social, religious, class, or other types of uh, uh, tensions that may exist. And the specific uh, uh, points of conversation that we uh, listed and, and presented to them were the following. Well, one set of questions was, what controversies are old but active, and what controversies are newer, perhaps reflecting social tensions or factors that have recently emerged? What active controversies have older roots, and why do they continue to hold the interest of archaeologists? A second set of questions concerns how have studies of archaeology in your region con been conducted by scholars within the country of focus, whether this be India or Japan, Korea, Cambodia, or China or elsewhere, uh, and from the outside, uh, been focused on more or less similar issues in recent years? Is there a divergence or convergence of, and, and what are the factors that are influencing these trends? And finally, how are mythical, quasi-historical, and early foundational historical uh, figures utilized, animated, materialized, and referenced in the discourse on archaeological sites, interpretations, and heritage in different countries in South and East Asia. Has this changed in recent years in ways that reflect new social factors that are influencing the orientation of archaeology? These are the sorts of questions that we pose to them to think about and to help stimulate the uh, discussion, but exactly which directions each of the uh, uh, discussions today is going to take, um, uh, we will so we'll soon see. Um, we've asked the presenters to talk for only about 10 minutes, um, maybe slightly more or less than that. Um, and so, and then we hope that to have a conversation that will take up the rest of our time uh, leading up to a, um, a reception which uh, can then form a forum to continue these conversations uh, thereafter. 